Hey YouTube, it's Carrier Sidekick, and today I've got a little bit of a vlog for you guys on pretty much my gaming arsenal of accessories. Since I'm a girl, I'm pretty much a sucker for marketing. If something is marketed towards gamers, I'm like, yeah, I gotta buy that. Even if I don't even think it'll work, or if I've watched other people's reviews, I don't know, I gotta try it out for myself. I'm not currently sponsored by anybody, and it probably won't ever be, so all of the stuff that I'm, you know, gonna say is my personal opinion, you know, other people might like the stuff or might not like the stuff, but I'm going to be covering, let's see, Astro headsets, scuff controllers, control freaks, G Fuel, Gamer Grip, Gunner Glasses, and the Elgato Game Capture HD. So if any of those, you know, pique your interest, stay tuned. I'll get to it sometime. So let's get started. First, let's start with the latest thing I got. Astro A50s. Thanks to my lovely boyfriend. Okay, so I got these for Christmas. I'm pretty much done looking at the box. Okay, so my boyfriend got those for me for Christmas. He's a trickster. He's all telling me that he wanted to get a new headset for himself. He just play games, but not like me. And he very much really likes Grand Theft Auto. And I was like, well, Astro makes the best headsets, at least what I've heard. And he got me one, so yeah, it's pretty awesome. And so here is what they look like. They're huge. They're so big. And first time I wore them, I wasn't really quite sure that I liked them because the one thing I couldn't really find on YouTube was how these compared to like a basic headset that most people would have. What I was really finding a lot of videos is it was, oh my gosh, was A50s compared to A40s. I'm like, yeah, that's great, I guess. I mean, I was probably leaning more towards A40s actually, mostly because, okay, so these are X31s and I do have X11s and I don't really like my X31s because they run on the same frequency as most routers. And they, they pop and they crack a lot whenever you're talking to people, and it sucks. And they go through batteries really fast. So I just wasn't a big fan of them, so I really didn't want to go wireless again. Um, I know, though, that these have, you know, really improved on wireless frequency. They don't pop or crack at all. Sound great. But comparing the two, these are a lot better sounding. Way more than I thought that they would be. They are really bassy, which I don't necessarily like. When a frag grenade or something goes off, it's so, it almost gives you a headache that's how much bass is in it. But I can definitely hear footsteps a lot better. Well, I could sound her pretty well with these. Um, I can tell with these a little bit better if someone's on the left or the right or above me. Like, I can tell more where they're coming from. So, yeah, they're totally great. I love them. So, I guess I would definitely give these a good review. But, you know, okay, so the, I guess the, the thing it comes down to is, is it worth the money? Because, you know, a lot of these are expensive. So these were $100, my 11s were $60, and these are $300. It's a pretty big, you know, price difference. So are they worth the money? I'm going to say it really just depends on how much you game. If you are a pro, or you want to play competitive, or you play a lot like me, yeah, they're probably worth it. Um, if you really just play only a couple times a week, no, you'll be fine with something like this. And actually, I got this and my other set. My 11's refurbished. I paid 60 for these and 30 for the other. And I've had no problems with either one. They're, you know, besides the wireless thing, they're both pretty good. They're not bad. Um, so, yeah. Nice accessory. So... Move on to the next most important thing would be my scuff controller. Also, my boyfriend got me this. God, he's such a great guy, isn't he? Uh, okay, so I'd never heard of scuff about a year ago, and I was try I was thinking about getting control freaks and gunner glasses, and um, so I was looking up YouTube reviews, and I found Woody's Gamer Tag, and he's definitely one of my favorite channels. I really wish he'd upload more Call of Duty lately, though, because I don't really get Minecraft. But I saw him review this product, and I thought that was pretty awesome because I was playing Black Ops 2 at the time, and if you played Black Ops 2, you know Bannock knifing sucks. It didn't work at all in the game. So for the first time ever, I went from default layout to tactical layout. 
So I was definitely able to drop shot, which I never do because I have to like consciously think to drop shot. It just doesn't come natural to me, which it did, but it doesn't. And I didn't really want to give up panic knifing completely. So I knew that with this product, I could still panic knife. So I really wanted one, but I was going to wait till summer because of a summer job to buy one because they're rather expensive. Now this one doesn't have much on it. It's pretty basic. I don't really like colored controllers anyway, so I did just want black. And it got A and B button, general setup, got trigger stops, and the screws for the hair triggers. The only thing I would get if I got another one would be the scuff grip, which is like a rubberized grip some military grip that they put on it and uh i would definitely get that because i get sweaty hands and it's really hard to hold a controller other than that though i'm pretty happy with it i will say i think it's very well made i think this one was probably around 80 to 100 dollars probably like 90 or 100 so you know about 50 dollars more than a regular controller so this one I would say is pretty much worth the money if, again, if you play a lot, if you either want to play competitive or you play a lot, then yes, this controller is definitely worth it. If you just play, you know, a little bit, um, no, I probably wouldn't get one because they are expensive. Although I will say, I do think that they're overpriced, especially the cool ones. Like, if I was to get another one, I would want the Optic one. Optic's currently my favorite team, and I made my controller that I'd want and it was $150 and that's that's a lot of money but if you can't afford one you can make one of these for less than $10 all you have to have is the controller these I don't know if I'm gonna be able to you know get a really good view of it they're just general screws you can get from a hardware store so are the hair triggers you can make the paddles out of Lexan there's plenty of YouTube videos on how to make a scuff controller. You just need a solder, a soldering gun. And it's just a little bit of soldering on the inside and some screws. It's not a whole lot to this controller, really, but I can definitely still play without it. Um, I mean, it's a little more comfortable, but I could still play without this. Uh, I would say my favorite part's definitely, you know, the B button because I can panic knife and I still can drop shot even though I still don't ever do it. Jump shots, I almost never do. I do use it to climb over stuff. The A took a lot longer to get used to than the B. Um, and I've heard that from other people. I was saying that triggers feel like they almost have a little bit more pressure on them, I guess, because of the fact that they're a little bit lower with the hair triggers. But yeah, this is a great product. And also, my boyfriend just surprised me. Uh, he just got me out of the blue. He's yeah, such a sweet guy. <laughs> I'm a lucky girl. So, yeah, good product. Since I'm holding this anyway, we'll talk about Control Freaks next. I have CQCs, um, mostly because I have pretty small hands. I do think that the Xbox controller is fine to hold. There's definitely people that say it's too big and it's too bulky, which I thought it was at first, because I went from PlayStation 2 to this, and it's a lot bigger than the PlayStation 2 controller. But I got used to it. And honestly, I hate the PlayStation controllers now. It's pretty much the whole reason I won't get a PS4. I mean, I don't like the controller, and um, I don't like the PS3 controller. I've not tried the PS4 controller, so, I mean, I can't say for sure that I hate it, but it doesn't look that different than PS3s, which I hate. The fact that the thumbsticks are right here just feels super awkward, and the triggers feel pretty bad, too, so... I don't think I'll be getting a PS4, and I've already held the Xbox One controller. I like it. It really feels identical to this except for the thumbsticks so back to control freaks i do like the cqc you know it's only slightly taller really not by much i'm trying to get this like totally flat but i have the camera at an angle so it's not really uh it's not really helping um as far as does it help your accuracy i mean maybe a little um but not like the reviews on their website say i almost feel like robots fill out their reviews because there's so many that are just like, I used to go 26 and 10. Now I put them on and I go 57 and 2. Like, they don't work that way. They're not going to make you amazing. Um, I really feel like it just kind of makes the stick feel, like, smoother. Like, it just, it almost feels like it was oiled. I don't know how to describe it. 
It feels smoother than this one. I've tried them on both sticks. Uh, I just go with the right. And honestly, like, I could definitely live without it. It's I kind of just really like that it's grippy, which I went with the convex one. And this one looked really grippy, and it is. So it really just kind of helps me grip the, the thumbsticks a little bit better. You know, they're like $10, so they're not... You know, they're worth it, I guess, but uh, I can live without them. But, you know, that's just me. And sorry that I keep not looking at the camera. So, yeah, let's move on to the next product. We'll just go with Gunner glasses. Okay, so these are Gunner Parallax. Put them on and look like a huge dork. But, you know, I am a dork anyway. Um, you really see the glare of uh, the computer I'm looking at. Okay, so I paid $35 for these used on eBay. There's no way I would have paid $70, $80 for these new because I pretty much figured that they wouldn't work and they don't. And I don't really have much to say about them. I mean, it says that they're supposed to improve contrast. They do the complete opposite. They reduce contrast. Um, I really thought when I, if I wore these that the computer screen or the TV screen would look yellow. It doesn't. It just looks very, like, Blah. Like, if you played Ghost, you know how washed out the game looks. Now with the Elgato, I can make it look better. And this just removes all the effects that I put on it and makes it look washed out. As far as eye fatigue, I don't know that I play long enough to really know if they prevent it. Um, uh, the, the one big problem I have with these, though, so I wear glasses in regular life. I can't see very well without them. Um, these get really sweaty. Like, I have sweat right up here on the lenses, and it blocks my vision. And this does happen in real life with my regular glasses, but only if it's really, really hot outside. Like, if it's 100 degrees and I'm working out, or, you know, I'm just outside doing some kind of activity, not playing video games. I mean, it's not like I don't ever sweat playing video games. I do have a heater on, and, you know, I get amped up at times. But, like, these things collect sweat way too easily, and I have to constantly clean them. So, also, um, I don't feel like they are the best made. They feel really cheap. So, I think, you know, this is a total gimmick. It does not work. But if you can find a cheap pair on eBay and you really want to know, then there you go. Okay, so I'll go with Gamer Grip, because like I said with the scuff controller, my hands get pretty sweaty, and it's hard to hold on the controller, and it's getting pretty frustrating. So, I bought this. I've only used it once so far. Scuff took like two weeks to ship this thing, which is annoying. And also, look how tiny it is. Like, it looks so much bigger in the picture. <laughs> uh, but, does it work? Yeah, it actually does. It I don't really know how to describe it. It makes your hands feel very weird. You just you put a little drop on, you rub them together, you let it dry. It actually kind of leaves a residue on your controller. And it smells like toothpaste because it's got spearmint in it. Um, it's kind of gross feeling a little bit. But does it work? Yeah, it does. Uh, it's, this stuff's like $15, so I would say this is worth it. You know, if you have trouble gripping your controllers, also, I only use all of this stuff whenever I play Call of Duty, and I do want to say, I feel like I'm a pretty hardcore gamer, and I play a lot more than Call of Duty. I do not want people to think that I only play Call of Duty, like, you know, Grogon Gamer or SSS Sniper Wolf. Um, so a lot of people are like, oh, they're not real gamers, because that's all they play. I play a lot more than Call of Duty. My game stack is huge. Uh, I just only upload Call of Duty because I don't really feel like people want to watch me play Lego Batman. So, okay, next product, uh, G Fuel, an energy drink for gamers, yeah, okay, so when I bought this stuff, it was probably about a year ago, they only had it in three flavors, Fruit Punch, Lemon Lime, and Blue Ice, which is what I bought, now they have several other ones, I really would like to try Watermelon, because I love Watermelon, it's definitely my favorite flavor, and I'd like to try Pink Lemonade, I had no idea what blue eyes was going to taste like, but I don't really care for fruit punch or lemon lime. I was hoping it was going to taste like blue Powerade, because I love blue Powerade. 
Um, this stuff pretty much tastes like blue cotton candy. It tastes really sweet, even though there's no sugar in it, and it's honestly gross. I don't like it. Um, it's not so bad where you can't drink it, but it's not good. There probably are people that like this flavor. Otherwise, I guess they'd probably stop making it, but I'm not very happy with it. As far as, as does it work? Well, if you think Monster works for you, or you think, you know, Rockstar energy drinks or anything like that works for you, then it probably will, because it's pretty much the same stuff, just in a powder form. Um, for me, it doesn't really work, but energy drinks in general don't work for me. I just need sleep, natural energy. And so, yeah, I'm well, not, not super happy with this. I do want to try the watermelon, like I said. Right now, their site is down on the watermelon for trials because I don't want to pay a ton of money to try watermelons. But, you know, maybe I will one day. Okay, so. And last thing. Elgato Game Capture HD. Probably the most common HD capture card. Everybody uses this thing. And why? Well, I mean, first of all, it's small. Hey, look, you can see me. Okay, so it is small, you know, it's like the size of the deck of cards, a little bit bigger. And it's pretty simple. It, HDMI out of the Xbox into this thing, out of it into your TV, and then USB into the computer. You know, that sounds great. Um, there's really only two problems I have with the device. One's kind of minor and fixable, and the other one is pretty major, and I'll probably actually make a whole video on it. Okay, so the minor thing is the fact that you can't watch Netflix with it plugged in because Netflix is HDCP protected, which I get it should be. But I think that you should be able to watch Netflix with it plugged in, just not be able to record it. So you pretty much you're going to be constantly, anytime you want to watch Netflix, having to unplug the HDMI cords and like move them around. And that got really annoying, so I just bought an HDMI splitter and I just bypass it into that TV. And then... The screen I'm actually looking at now is the one I play Call of Duty on, and that actually does come out of here. So that was pretty easy and fixable and wasn't that much, maybe like $10, $20 for a splitter. Big problem, though, this does require somewhat of a powerful computer. It's not like it requires a super powerful computer, but your everyday you know, computer that you might spend three, dollars $500 on at Best Buy or Walmart isn't going to be able to capture this all that well. Um, if you go to their website, they have all the specs, but it doesn't say if they're the recommended specs or if they're just the minimum. I'm guessing they're the minimum. My computer does not meet the minimum requirements for it. I used to be able to record just fine, but lately the screen is just, it's super glitchy and the frame rate drops all over the place. It's totally unwatchable. I was able to fix it. And I'll make a video on what it looks like and how I fixed it because I have seen other YouTubers been having this problem. So, yeah, it's a good capture card. There's really nothing wrong with it. But if you're going to consider buying it, do a little bit of research first. Don't be like me and just buy something. Oh, yeah, it'll probably work because uh, it didn't. Well, it did for a while, but now it doesn't. And I don't know if I did something to the computer if I, like, deleted a driver, but I did a full system restore and it still does it. So I just have to record at a lower quality. I still record in HD and all my videos still look fine, but I don't know. Um, if you don't have a very powerful computer, you might want to consider the HD PBR2. It does require a lot less powerful of a computer. So that's all my gaming accessories. My two favorites are obviously my Scuff and my Astros. So I hope you guys, you know, like my arsenal. If you want to see a gaming setup, I could probably do that. Uh, it's not anything spectacular. And it's definitely not like anybody else's. I'll say that. My setup's different. But I do like it, and it's kind of unique, and it's it's me. So, hope you guys liked the video. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. See you guys later.